What's up, y'all? I hope you had a good weekend off, but we are back to our residential locksmith starter series, and today is going to be on Quickset Smart Key. That's right, that funny lock with the little hole in the plug that people can rekey themselves with this tool. We have talked about this tool in previous videos where uh, it's the best dang free poker tool ever because in addition to poking smart key you can poke regular retainers so this should be a tool that you have on your key ring if you're a, if you see a key ring and it's got one of these on there more than likely they're a locksmith because it just makes a good poker tool today we're going to talk about quick set smart key in just taking off the doorknob and this is also found on lever handles but i have not been able to look i don't have any of those lever handles around here because they go in the they go in the scrap metal but we're not going to really talk about unscrewing because we've already talked about unscrewing locks as we progress through this series you might notice that i speed up certain sections and that's because it's already been covered in the past such as simply rekeying the plug of one manufacturer uh, just different styles of locks, but we are going to talk about unscrewing this because this has a slightly different style of tightening the screws down or putting it back on. So we do need to talk about that. The deadbolt is already off the door. I've got a sample of a quick set single cylinder and a Baldwin deadbolt. Now, Baldwin used to be Schlage Keyway, but they merged with Quickset or Black & Decker or Spectrum, whoever the heck it is now. Anyway, they're making them with the smart key quick set style key so they can be keyed in a quick set they just introduced kind of recently six months ago they just introduced the schlage smart key but so far i haven't knock on wood seen one of those in the field yet uh we don't know the you know how the little wafers which we're going to see here later in this video we don't know how that's going to hold up yet with schlage because the cuts are so much closer and there's more of them I guess we'll find out when we start having to replace those cylinders but let's go ahead and get started taking the knob off because like i said this these screws don't they can but they just don't come all the way out there's kind of a little bit supposedly quicker way to do it but uh, you know normally when we're in the shop i've been using the klein number two phillips with the round shank but i do also do tool reviews and such on this channel so if you're not subscribed make sure and subscribe and we're going to be talking about this vessel soon i just ripped the tags off of it brand new in the shop and uh magnetic tip as well i'm not overly fond of magnetic tips but we're going to start using the vessel for some of these and this is the vessel uh uh, uh, uh 900 p.2 number two phillips round shanks got this kind of i'm not sure about this i feel like i should stick away far enough but anyway yeah Stay tuned for a screwdriver video. As with anything, when you start getting used to one tool and you think, hey, there might be something out there better. Sometimes there are things that are better and sometimes not. So I guess we'll see on that. But with these, uh, a lot of the new style quick set and wiser, which we'll talk about uh, in the future wiser videos, the knobs are designed to do this quick, gotta step on the mount, this what they i guess they call a quick style release so you only have to back it off a few turns and when you do you can eh, you can uh, twist the rosette just like this twist it and pull it out now what's going on there is these screws again you have to push that in those the mounting screws and you saw i just you didn't have to take screws off they go through the latch hole uh, but basically what they're doing is they're intersecting with these guys right here. And you see how when you hold the knob and then turn that, see how that moves and they've got an open slit. Basically the screw is just, it's got a catch in that open slit. So when you're putting it back on, do push it in. It's pretty important when you're putting it back on to have these level. So twist, push, let go. When you let go right there, you can see the screws kind of captured in that now as you're tightening it down you do need to hold it as far tight this way as you can uh not a great system ever since they introduced this i've been like Ugh. Uh, because if they get a little bit loose and somebody kind of twist it to get it open yeah it, it it comes off so anyway putting it back on we'll go ahead and put it back on real quick ah get in there you see it just goes straight through again these need to be pretty much perfectly straight. If one is longer than the other, so you can eyeball it, 
if one's longer than the other it, it makes it hard getting back on so again push on look at which way it twists so i know i gotta twist this way push in turn it make sure the heads of the screws are engaged in those little uh, as high up as possible and, and I'm, over here i'm holding it with my hand so uh and then we're just gonna tighten it down and uh, normally what i'll do these can bind up pretty bad so i'll tighten one side until it stops come up tighten another side till it stops check it and then tighten tighten not quick set tighten just tighten the screw and tight until they're all about equally tight you don't want to tighten one side down really heavily anyway let's get this off so one thing about quickset smart key is you don't need a pin kit at all because they use little wafers instead of the traditional pens hey look spoiler alert so rekeying quickset smart key when you have the existing key is actually very easy to do have your existing key you want to lubricate it first with a good quality lubricant. Have a towel ready right there. I'm going to run the key in and out a few times. I don't necessarily recommend turning it because sometimes people have old worn out copies of keys. I will mention that now. If you have a really bad copy of a key, say from a big box store, and you're having to jiggle this or, or kind of move it to get it to turn, your lock is gonna die very quickly. So you wanna go ahead and change the keys to a original key or a code cut key. Uh, and also there are aftermarket keys out there like this one. Uh, while they may work, they're not ideal. You wanna to try to stick with, you know, an original quick set key, factory cut, or a punched out key or a code cut key only. Uh, and then you have the Baldwin style keys that are say smart key compatible and now they do have kw1 and sc on them since sc is out now so anyway we're going to lubricate that real well we're just going to run the key in and out oh that's not the right one we're going to check uh, a new key so we're going to key it to this key we want to make sure that the key is different you can hold it up and look at it to tell that and uh, go ahead and turn this to the three o'clock position take our quick set rekey tool and we're going to push it in till we hear a click Hear that click? Sometimes you can feel it more than you can hear it. We're gonna pull the existing key out, take our new key, insert it well, and then turn. So then check it, make sure there's no catch. If there's a catch, you can maybe try lubricating it again, but these cylinders do seize up easily. So if there is any type of catch after you've keyed it up to a key, then A, you don't have a, a well-cut key, try another key. If it still catches, you need to stop using it and replace just the cylinder itself. So that is just how you re-key one of those when you have the existing key. But if you don't, you do have to take them apart. Now I'm gonna show this deadbolt. It uses your standard two screws. We're not gonna go over that. Just back them out and there you go. Other styles had a thumb turn that's held in, not with that screw, it's actually held in with a 632 screw and i'll show you i'll show you that right there so you get your best dang allen wrench set ever and that's how that is attached or held on in this case this is off of a house that somebody came along and said hey i've got this screw and actually it works you know <laughs> it does work but eh. So you take that off, you see no visible screws on the inside, but if you look underneath, so if we were at the door, we'd go, ooh, we'd bend down and go, oh look, all the way around there, there seems to be these little divots, but right there, there's an opening. So you take your little miniature flathead, put it in there just like that. I would recommend putting your finger on this because once you twist it, it like pops off and goes flying. So you know, have, a, have this ready to catch it when it pops off. And that, there you go, there's your screws, just like any other quick set, heavier duty style deadbolt. And the Baldwin version, again, is just like the Titan, as uh, I think it was James Randolph said, you, you almost think that they rehashed all the Titan when they built these heavier duty locks. Now, I don't know. Oh, we need to take this apart, because we gotta get to the cylinder. They are held in differently, depending on what brand it is. 
So we're gonna unscrew this and take it apart. And with the quick set knob, if I had to rekey all these at once, I'd, I'd go ahead and take apart all my locks and lay them out. So here we have that. Here we have a bald one. Again, just quick set keyway. You can literally look at the keyway and tell if it was Schlage, it would have an angle version. You can see that in my keys video. And we can see those are just held in weirdly enough with just this little clip right here. Look at that, just that little clip hooks behind some ears on there. So typically what I'll do is I'll just push it up just enough to catch it and then uh, pull it off. If it bends out, which they always do, just kind of bend it back in a little bit. It, it can tolerate a lot of bending. Uh, oh, just dropped it. Don't drop it, whatever you do, because the cylinder will have to have that retainer system. Don't do what I just did. Make sure you hold on to those. Now, normally you'd be like, Ur! but actually they, ooh, <laughs> they just poof right out the front, just like that. Poof. Sometimes they're a little wonky getting out. The other style, single cylinder, often has this big black clip. Don't worry about that clip right now. We're not worried about that. We're gonna take a screwdriver, wedge it underneath, twist and pull. What that does is it raises it off that little peg. So when you put that back on and whack it down, it slips over the peg and that's what holds that on. So, and of course, boop, drops out the front. And lastly, the doorknob comes apart just like a regular quick set knob. Has this extra shielding on some of them, so it is a little bit more difficult to get in there. Uh, you can always you can always do that part with a screwdriver, right? Just like that. Or anything for that matter. Turn it to the middle, and uh, sometimes it's not as good, I might add, because the quick set at least is easier to do. But pull it out, but you still need it pretty much for this. Boom, pops out just like a regular quick set. As with anything, if somebody brought these to me, I always turn the half moon this way if the keyhole is up, and this way if the keyhole is on that side. That way when I'm putting them back together, I just set them down and have it, and I know when I pick it up that it was handed that way. It may not be right, but that's how it was brought in to me. Now, if you're taking them off the door, again, go ahead and put this back on the door with your spindle, make sure it's centered, just like the other quick sets. Boom, just like that, put it right in the middle, and that way you can go tighten it back on the door with your silly screws, and then snap this in whichever way it needs to go. It can be snapped in either which way. And uh, again, not gonna mess with the black clip yet, but we're gonna take the silver springy clip off right there. Nope. Nope. Get off there. And comes out the front. Careful not to drop it. There are pretty much two things that are out there. The quick set cradle or the better resetter. Uh, Night Owl did send me one and I have, I cannot, it's in one of my kits somewhere. I just can't locate it. So we're just going to focus in on this. The better resetter is, is just a, a piece of metal this long with the cuts in it. And you, you snip it down into here while you're turning it. This kind of does that for you. So we're gonna turn that to that position and we don't have a key for this guy. So we wanna do this first. Once we get it out, we wanna go ahead and lubricate these, these open holes. And I would also, while you're doing this, take your key and insert it. Make sure these little wafers, make sure nothing flies out the bottom because once they start flying out the bottom, see how those pop up right there as you put the key in and they're actually spring loaded. Yep, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Lubricated it real well, put it in, drop it in all the way. You can leave the clip on. All right, make sure it's all the way down and then turn. Now I hold it, boom, just like that. So now it's holding still. If you let it go, it kinda, see how it does that, so. I always make sure, and that's how, that's actually very dangerous to do, I might add. Never never let it go like that. So we're gonna push it in until we hear a click or feel a click. Oh, that was a loud click. And uh, we'll go with quick set, all right? Boom, I push my key all the way in. I don't pull it out from here. We're still holding it at this notch. I push it out the back. I feel like, I don't know if that makes any difference, but I feel like if you pull the key, it might come out a little bit. And then we're gonna turn this back to the ready position. 
Now this is out. If we locate this little notch in it, that's where the sidebar is gonna be at. I always hold it right there because if this was a regular cylinder, the Bible and top pins would be up here. So we're gonna go ahead, turn it. We hear it click into position. We can see that sidebar and it is smooth. So, and that's pretty much all the same. Again, here we have this guy. We're gonna put it in, turn it poke it and push it out the back because there is no thing to do it with so I'll just grab a screwdriver and gently push it out turn that back set it down and insert turn and it comes out where that sidebar pokes out what to do if you don't have a cradle or the better resetter you get to take it apart. It can be done. It's kind of ticky, especially when you're learning how to do it. But we are going to give this a go. This is actually a Baldwin version. Quick set version is pretty much identical. Yep. And uh, grab our removal tool here. Push, push. Pull this clip out. Set it aside. And this ring, most of them have that little ring. So you will need, like for instance, a little tip of something to push these wafers out of the way. You can actually use this guy too. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and push this. And we see how it's being held in right there. So we just need to push that down and put pressure on it to hold it. Kind of like replacing top pins in a plug. Oh, there it goes. Sometimes you can twist it a little bit. I always just kind of hold everything that you see. I see this, so I'm holding it down. All right, we see a ball bearing that just fell out right there. That is out of that area. That gives it that little spring, so we want to be cognizant of that. Let's go ahead and drop that spring out right there. Move you out of the way that came out from right there. So that's why you hold it over a clean area. All right, we're gonna grab a pair of tweezers here, maybe, yep. And the sidebar, that's that silver thing you see through the slot. We're gonna set it aside, remembering how it came out, and we're just gonna set it down. Oh, see, it flipped over. And then it just turned around, so, yeah, that's one of the problems with that. These springs typically will stay in there need to be cognizant of that spring as well. So we're gonna push this in and also these wafers. Again, make sure you're over an area and we're gonna lift this guy off. Sometimes that spring stays and sometimes it doesn't. And we're gonna flip this around to see we lost several of those stayed right there. So we need to get all these wafers back in here and this is this is what we're looking at. I'm gonna bend down. I can't really see this through the camera. So you see this is, these are the guys. And this is one reason why I hate magnetized things. See those wafers right there? That's what's controlling the key, but they need to be on this guy to reset it. So we're gonna take these guys just like that. That one tried jumping out already. They're all the same, so they can go back in any any one of the holes. Also, while we're here, we're gonna go ahead and inspect this guy. <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and get this guy on the pair of tweezers. We're gonna kind of look at it. Let's, let's zoom in on that thing. There we go. So this is the sidebar notch right there. These are the five or six teeth that are needed to set it to a key. We're gonna get them all back in. We can see the sidebar slot, right? Right there. So let's get these guys in. Sometimes it's easier to do with just your fingertips. Sometimes. Just like that, just like that. Okay, get on in there. Should have uh, one, two, three, four, five of them because that quick set key has five cuts so we were missing one in the front right there 
All right, now we're gonna take that smart key tool, just, uh, just kind of raise them up. And this is the tricky part, is getting it back together without these moving. One thing you could do, make sure they're all sliding okay and centered. One thing you could do in this situation is uh, I'm gonna take a little bit of this lock shot, which is a heavier, heavier lubricant. And I'm just gonna put it right there. It's okay for use. And what that'll do with that little bit heavier, but not too heavy, lubricant is, is kind of help hold those still all right remembering that we need to instead of flipping this over because as soon as you flip this over they're going to all drop out so typically what i'll do is i'll come in and i'll hold this upside down and see so even that simple movement can cause them to to get thrown off all right, we, we went together really well there, y'all. I'm holding pressure towards the back of the plug, just like that, making sure it slides. It's in the zero state right now, uh, just like you were pushing it, but we do have to still hold it. And we need our sidebar back in. Okay, we're gonna keep holding this pressure back as far as we can, as much as we can, and insert the key. Being careful not to make your sidebar jump off. All right, make sure it's all the way in, and then we're gonna let this go. And your sidebar should fully drop in there. If it does not, then it did not reset correctly. All right, now I'm gonna hold the sidebar with a little pressure because when you pull the key out, the sidebar wants to jump up. And again, I'm pushing this way and pulling all at once. Just like that, make sure they don't jump out the bottom. It's bad if they do that. I'm gonna put our key back in. It's gonna fall, make sure it falls all the way. Does it, did it, did it? I don't think it did, y'all. Okay, there it goes. I think. All right, let's try to get it back in. It won't go all the way in some positions, and that's one of them. So we're gonna come out, turn it maybe a little bit. Nope, the sidebar. There it goes. What I always do with that is Get it turned, get it turned. Check it. It works, right? But I always do this. Push in, hear it click, pull it out, and then put it back in, and then turn it, just to let it set, you know, kind of like it was supposed to, just to make sure it's gonna reset okay. And then just a simple matter, putting this back on. Now you see, while it can be done for onesies and twosies, you see definitely why it's pretty imperative that you have either a better reset or, or a cradle because that is so ticky. It can, oh, uh, you know what we did? We forgot those balls. We forgot the ball bearings on the bottom. So we got to take it all back apart. See, that's what happens when you're not paying attention and forget our balls. But we should be able to do that fairly easy. Again, holding this. We're gonna come out till we find where the balls were. Put our spring in. I know y'all were yelling when I was putting them back together. What about the balls, Jason? What about the balls? Well, we put the balls back. And boop, boop. And that is it on oh, quick set smart key, y'all. I'm gonna follow that up with a Houdini. Mixing the Houdini and the lock shot, it's okay. It's okay. And put it back on your door just like we did the older, the original quick set locks. Thanks again for watching y'all. Our next video coming out is I have no idea what. I think we're still stuck with quick set, probably aftermarket and lever handles will all be in one video. So stay tuned for that. Make sure and get subscribed. 
make sure and hit that thumbs up button and we'll catch y'all next video. So good.